Hi, I'm Grace from Be Whole, Be Happy, helping you have more whole and happy relationships, intimacy, and life. Today I'm going to offer just a little conversation about something very alive for me, very much a part of my life. Something I've found recently, which is the difference between empowered surrender and disempowered surrender. And specifically in the context of relationships. First of all, I know that surrender is it's a triggering word. For a lot of people, they hear the words letting go and they think, okay, I know I need to do that, but I don't know how. But then the word surrender comes and there's just this <clears throat> fear, like gut wrenching, heart clutching fear, surrender. Because we've been taught that surrender means to give in or to give up to someone else. And if you're interested in more of this, there's a whole mindful intimacy video about conscious surrender in relationships. Today, I want to offer the perspective that we can surrender through anything. And that most of the time, that's the choice that leads us to the most change and growth. Holding on to whatever the story is, holding on to whatever part of my identity wants to really validate itself and know that it's right, usually keeps us in the same patterns that we're used to. However, nobody can force us to surrender. Nobody can force us to let go. Recently for me, I've had some big transitions in my relationships. And they've come from external circumstances changing. So me wanting things to really stay the same. You know, things are moving along. I feel really good in this relationship. And then all of a sudden, life circumstances totally changed. You may be able to relate to this. Things like when our partner just decides to break up with us or does something that really affects us deeply that was not in our control. Nobody asked us permission for that. Or if you've experienced the death of a loved one, that wasn't something that we got to choose. But we do get to choose how to continue being in that relationship. We get to feel empowered with our choice of what to do now. And for me, the last couple of months, I can recognize now that I'm a little far out of that situation, been through it to the other side of surrender, that the moments that were the hardest for me were the ones I said, I don't want what is. I am in resistance. I don't accept this. And from that, I felt out of control. And so letting go felt incredibly scary. It felt like all of my power was being stripped away from me. And that was my choice. In fact, there's another way to be in that situation, which is, this is happening. I accept it. I may not like it. I may not be celebrating on the inside or the outside that this is what's happening. But this is what is. As my mom says, it is what it is. And that is the first step to moving into an empowered state of letting go or an empowered state of surrender. Because all of a sudden, I'm not a victim. All of a sudden, I'm in acceptance, which means I'm showing up. I'm a little bit more whole. And there's no expectation that you're then supposed to be joyful or happy. But there is much more of a possibility of those organic original states of who we are coming to the surface. So we say, okay, I accept this. This is what is right now. And now I'm at choice. How do I want to be in relationship with this thing that is? How do I want to show up? Because it is my choice. 
And there isn't then an expectation that I'm going to choose compersion, which is being happy and joyful at all of the love that our loved ones have for other people. Or that I'm going to choose to be excited that my partner has decided to move to France. Or that I'm going to be excited that they've asked for space for the next three months. But I actually can choose to celebrate my freedom in being with what is. And whatever that relationship has given me. So I can see some gratitude in what is. This is a big shift because if you watch the mind, and I guarantee you've experienced this, when something shitty happens, the mind wants to hold on to that thing. And all of a sudden, it's looking for validation in 360 degrees. And that's what keeps me a victim, is when all I'm looking for are the moments, and I'll share my story, the moments I feel like I am not prioritized that you, my partner, are prioritizing everything except me. And I can find those moments to validate. But 98% of the time, that's not what's actually going on in our relationship. It's just that I am so fixated on those moments that that's all I'm able to look for. So shifting into actually noticing what is that other 98% of the time is a huge way to let go and to be in an empowered state of control. And maybe what you notice is that 50 or 60% of the time, the actions coming at you are crappy and you don't want to be in that situation. Or maybe you notice you have a little bit more power than you think you do to make requests, to ask for change. So all of these very small steps, which can be challenging, can feel like big steps, are ways to feel a little bit more empowered. We say yes to what is, even if we don't like it, especially if we don't like it. And then we look for the good. We look for what's really happening and find ways to celebrate. Maybe that's 30 seconds a day you can celebrate Something, something in this relationship. But if you spend all of your time looking for the things that are painful, that's the story that you're validating. And if you notice that that's really what's happening, then you get to make an empowered choice from that place. And for me, the final piece of this is to choose love. Choosing love is surrender. Choosing love is saying, no matter what's happening in the outside world, I want to show up in love. I want to show up in connection. I want to show up in acceptance. It doesn't mean I have to hang out in a relationship that sucks. It doesn't mean I have to be celebrating every moment if I've just gone through the hardship of the loss of my partner. But choosing love means that I go for connection. And that when I notice that visceral sensation of starting to close and contract and pull away, I find whatever methods, you can go through the be whole Be Happy videos, there's a lot on there, to let go, to be mindful, to say yes, to return to love. For me, Recently, I was able to see this, and somebody said, wow, this has been an incredible summer for you, this big transitions in all of your relationships, and, and you're still here. How do you, what, what are you doing? What are you actually doing? And I recognize that choosing to be in an empowered place of surrender is the only thing that helps me move through. Choosing to say yes to what is to let go of my victimhood, to look for places to be grateful and to choose love are the steps that I take every day. And when I sit down on my mat and all of a sudden my mind has gone crazy because my story of not being prioritized in my relationship is very loud, then I choose love. 
Some days it helps a lot and some days it helps a little, but it always helps some. I would love to know your strategies. I would love to know your strategies to letting go into what is to feeling more empowered when we hit a place of victimhood and to choosing love. So please comment below, send me a message, and share this with anyone you think it could help. Thank you so much. Namaste.